All right, the last homework problem we have to deal with is from 1994, and it deals with the magnesium fluoride and how it dissolves in water. And it tells me in a saturated solution at 18 Celsius, the concentration of magnesium is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And the equilibrium is represented by the equation above. Write the expression for the solubility product constant and calculate its value at 18 degrees Celsius. Well, the KSP is easy to write. KSP is going to equal the concentration of magnesium plus 2 times fluoride ion concentration squared. This ought to look pretty similar to the problem we did um, back from 1985. Now, calculating its value is a little bit different. We're going to have to apply a little basic stoic. Um, we know at equilibrium, so I'm going to have my ice, I see, and at equilibrium, I don't care about this, but I know that this is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. If that's the case, then fluoride has to be twice that much, so it would be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter if we're assuming 1 liter. So that means for KSP, <clears throat> I can just sub those values in. Concentration of magnesium, we said, was 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And the fluoride has to be twice that value squared, so 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Square that value, and we'll see that the value of KSP is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 9th. All right, the B part of this question wants to know the equilibrium concentration of Mg2 plus in one liters of saturated MgF2 at 18 degrees Celsius when I have 0.1 moles of solid Kf around. And I know that the Kf dissolves completely and that any change in the volume um, from doing this is negligible. So essentially, I've got MgF2 and I've got this occurring such that I still am going to make Mg2 plus and 2F minus only in my ice diagram. Still not going to worry about MgF2 because I know there's plenty around. There would be zero of this, but initially there would be 0.1 moles of F minus. The change here would still be X positive and positive 2X. And my equilibrium concentration of magnesium is X. However, my 0.1 plus 2X is going to be approximately 0.1. We get to make that assumption because the KSP um, for this system was 10 to the minus 9th, which we calculated on the previous um, slide. So we're just going to carry that over. We said on the previous part, part A, KSP was 6.3 times 10 to the minus 9. This is very small, so any change, even two times the change in fluoride, is going to be nearly negligible. And so we'll use our KSP expression, which said that this was equal to magnesium 2 plus concentration times the fluoride concentration squared. And we'll sub in what we know, 6.3 times 10 to the minus 9th is equal to the magnesium concentration, which we're calling X, times the fluoride concentration, which we're calling 0 0.1 moles per liter. And we are going to square this value right here. So then if we solve for the concentration of magnesium 2 plus, which we are calling X, it is going to be 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. And so the common ion effect has driven down um, the solubility of magnesium. Initially it was 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. In the presence of that much fluoride that causes less of this to come over and so we see that reflected in our calculated concentration of Mg2+. Part C says to predict whether a precipitate will form when I take 100 milliliters of 100 milliliters of 3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar magnesium and 200 milliliters of 2 times 10 to the minus 3 F minus. So they want us to also show the calculations that support this prediction. 
So I'm still going to be using my KSP, only this time I'm going to say Q. And Q is going to be equal to Mg plus 2 concentration times F minus concentration squared. And we want to see how Q compares to KSP so that we can determine whether or not we form um, a solid precipitate. In this case, I'm going to need to do a little work to find my concentration of magnesium. So the concentration of magnesium, I know that I have a concentration that is 3.00 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And I'm going to take 100 milliliters of that solution. And I'm going to take and add that to a solution that's 200 milliliters of something else. So essentially, I'm going to dilute this. Um, and this would be my dilution factor. So molarity 1 times volume 1 equals molarity 2, which is this concentration right here, times volume 2. And my volume 2 is the sum of the two volumes. So essentially, we're applying M1V1 equals M2V2. And we'll see that this is going to be 100 over 300. So this is one third of 3 times 10 to the minus 3 is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. We can find our concentration of fluoride similarly. Concentration of F minus. I'm going to start out with something that's 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So that's M1. My V1 is 200 milliliters. And my V2 is the 100 over 200, which we now know to be 300 milliliters. So I'm going to take this concentration and do it by 2 thirds. So 2 thirds of 2 times 10 to the minus 3 is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And so now all I have to do is find my Q. So in this case, we said Q is equal to Mg2+, plus, which is... 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and times F minus which we said was 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 and the F minus quantity needs to be squared and so when I do this work I see that I get 1.69 times 10 to the minus ninth for Q and we know that KSP from previous calculations is going to be 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So in this case we can see that Q at 1.6 times 10 to the minus 9th is much less than K. So we haven't reached a point where the ion concentrations of these two species is high enough that it forces precipitate to form. We're still able to move forward. We haven't reached the equilibrium constant yet. So anytime Q is less than K we favor products and if we're favoring products that means no precipitate will form at this point if we continue um, to add additional uh, magnesium to the system or fluoride to the system then we can force a precipitate to form but at our current location we have no precipitate form all right, the last question says that at 27 degrees, the concentration of magnesium 2 plus in a saturated solution has changed up to 1.17 times 10 to the minus 3. And so then they want to know, is it endothermic or exothermic? And they want an explanation to support it. So let's look at this. At 18 degrees C, we have 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And then at 27 degrees C, we're down to 1.17 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And so as we add heat, we're reducing the amount of stuff that will dissolve, the amount of solid that will dissolve. So adding heat is lowering my solubility. What does this match? That means up here that I'm adding heat and this is going down. So on which side of the reaction should I be? If I add heat here, 
it will drive the reaction forward. If I add heat here, it will drive the reaction backwards, which means that my solubility will decrease. So I've got heat as a product because it's going to f cause this to happen. We're producing less of these. And so that means if we're producing heat, we are exothermic. And we can say this is because added heat produces less soluble ions. What this indicates heat is a product of the original reaction. Okay, so that means it has to be exothermic. We're just applying Le Chatelier's idea. And that should be enough to answer the question from 1994.